today 16 of our acolytes will be ordained as ministers of the altar. They will have the responsibility of preparing the altar for the Eucharistic sacrifice and distributing the body and the blood of the Lord to his people. Additionally, they will become ministers of the Lord, proclaiming it faithfully. Their ordination calls them to serve the poor, the suffering, and the needy with love, following the example of Christ. As the procession moves towards the chapel, let us pray for our brothers, asking that they answer the call to serve the Lord and His people with freedom and conviction.
as it was announced by the rector, the new rector, Father Thomas. I wish all of you a happy feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. Church today rejoices and it celebrates the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, two strong pillars of the church, the apostle of the Gentiles, the apostles of the chosen people of God, the Jews. And we are here on this day, my dear friends, to offer to God 16 of our brothers for the time. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. Let us ask the Lord's mercy and pardon for the many times for praying to proclaim and witness the gospel of the Lord. I confess
on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul. Give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant me pray that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those to whom she received the beginning of the right religion. O oh God, who taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant me pray that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and Intending after the Passover to bring him. 
Beloved, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time for my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The election of the candidates. The right of ordination to the diaconate begins now with the election of the candidates. As each name is called, the candidate responds, present, and makes a sign of reverence to the bishop. Following this, the rector requests the bishop to ordain them, affirming that they are found worthy to be ordained as deacons. When the bishop declares the candidates chosen for the for the for the office of deacon, the assembly is invited to express their consent by responding, thanks be to God. Let those who are to be ordained deacons come forward. Abil Limaganda. Alvin Essel. Present. Amen Pius. Present. Anand General P. Present. Anumon SG. Present. Colonel C. Davis. Lazarus Kisku. Present. Lul Sami A. Present. Neil Armstrong Garsamara. Present. Kulin Lekra. Present. Robin T. Reggie. Dear brothers and sisters, today at the heart, the church celebrates the feast, the solemnity of St. Peter and St. Paul. And in all the three readings, we heard of there are little bit interaction with Jesus when he was when they were with him. And the first reading of the Acts of the Apostle, we heard of Peter's arrest, and then how the angel intervened and he was saved God's intervention 
in the life of Peter. We have in the second reading taken from St. Paul's letter to Timothy where he says, I have fought the good fight, I finished the race, I kept the faith, henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. He feels the joy of serving the Lord, he feels the joy of living the life in a worthy manner and now he awaits for the crown of righteousness, the reward for the life that he has spent. In the gospel once again, we have the Lord asking the question the apostle, who do men say that I am? And Peter replying, in the name of everyone, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He makes the public provision of vain. And Jesus tells him, Peter, Simon Barjona, it is no one who will it to you except my Father in heaven. And then, of course, he gives him the authority, the keys of the heavenly kingdom. My dear friends, as we celebrate today the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, just a few reflections on Peter and Paul. Peter was the leader of the apostles chosen by Jesus to have a special relationship with him. With James and John, he was privileged to witness the transfiguration, the raising of the dead child to life, the agony in Gethsemane, the raising his mother-in-law was cured by Jesus. He was sent to prepare the last supper place. His name is the first on every list of the apostles. Jesus calls him, Blessed are you. Simon, son of Jonah. Yes, he is a striking example of simplicity and holiness. Dear friends, Jesus says to us, as he said to Peter, it is not you who have chosen me, but I have chosen you. Peter, it is not human wisdom that makes it possible for you to believe, but my father's revelation. And this is what Jesus reminds to all of us today. Coming back to Paul, Paul's experience of the risen Jesus on the road to Damascus was the driving force that made him one of the most zealous, dynamic and courageous ambassadors of Christ. Persecution, humiliation, Weakness because his day to day carrying a cross, material for the further transformation, and the dying for Christ was for him 
living of Christ here on earth. Paul's life was a life of contradiction. A simple but absolute conviction that he had. Only God can save humanity. That was his conviction after his transformation. He went on preaching the gospel at every situation. My dear friends, today as we celebrate the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, what the church reminds us today Peter was overwhelmed by the great fisherman that is Jesus himself. Paul was empowered by the tremendous power of the risen Lord. Both had their moments of rejection, persecution, betrayal and doubt. And as all of us know that Peter died for Christ and he was crucified head down and Paul was martyred for the faith and for Christ. Both died for Jesus for faith. As we celebrate their feast today, the first pillars of the church, church reminds us today by celebrating the solemnity to imitate them, to proclaim the gospel in season and out of season. In every difficult stage, and nothing should keep us back for witnessing Christ in the world. Especially today, when the church is facing opposition from every corner for proclaiming the Christ through our service, through our proclamation evangelization, through our institutions. Church Holy Father reminds us that we should live in hope as pilgrims of hope, receiving all opposition with that hope that Jesus will help us to overcome each of them. And now coming back to today's importance, that great ordination. Dear brothers, having undergone the formation at this center of the Bodhana, I am sure you are well versed in the responsibilities of that and what that ordination and then the Christian ordination that is to come in your life or men. As you were reminded by the rector in his introduction, that is for service. Let me just give few of the reflection which the Pope Francis, whenever you met the priests and the deacons, shared with them, he says, the hands are laid on deacons unto the ministry of service. Unto the ministry of service. Deacons and all ordained ministers are called to lower themselves because Jesus took to us. He made himself like the servant of all. If there is one thing, one 
ourselves the smallest, the servant of all. These are not my words, these are the words of the Holy Father. Deacons are expected to recognize Jesus in the poor. Deacons are advocates for those who are voiceless, defenders of those who are powerless. The Holy Father continues father and says, Deacons have to act as sentinels. Deacons' job is not the job as God looks at it, but it's a vocation, a unique vocation, a sentinel showing the light, the path, the direction for the people. Deacons are ordained, he says, not for themselves, but for others. They need to be a part of the synagogue process, not for themselves, but for the entire people of God. Quoting St. Paul the sixth, referred, he says, the deacons, the animators of the church. Quoting John Paul the second, Father, he says, they are the church's service sacramentalized. Service sacramentalized. It has a deep, deep meaning. We know what is the importance of a sacrament. Sacrament which empowers, which gives special grace and the power of the Holy Spirit to us to act in this that ministry. And this is why Holy Father says the service that deacons are doing is sacramentalized, blessed in a special way by God Himself. The second part of the council refers the sacramental grace of the Holy Orders as applied to the Dietary Order. The document says, was strengthened by the sacramental grace in communion with the bishop and his group of priests. They serve in a diagnosis of liturgy, of war, and of charity to the people of God. The Vatican Council refers to the threefold ministry. Dear brothers, that you are going to adopt or today accept. That is the service of the liturgy, that is the liturgy, that is the table of God, assisting the bishop and the priest, sacrament of the word, and that proclamation of the word of God, be the witnesses of the gospel and of Christ and thirdly of charity or service and this what, what, what charity and service is nothing but that compassionate love a love that goes out of yourself to the poor neglected and as Holy Father says marginalized people and friendly. And the deacon is ordained to participate in his own way in these threefold ministry of the bishop. The entire church is called to be a servant church, a dying church. Holy Father says, repeating the words of Paul the sixth. Deacons are to be the animators of the church's service. They are called to be in forefront in service. Today, 
as you come forward, dear brothers, to accept this diet with order. I would like to remind you what Holy Father says. I expect you to be humble. And then he asks a very, very strong word. It is sad to see a bishop and a priest showing off. But it is even sadder to see a deacon wanting to put himself at the center of the world or at the center of the liturgy or at the center of the church. He says, be a humble. Let all good that you do be in secret between you and God. And so you will bear fruit. Lastly, we are on the eve, so to say, of the Jubilee 2025. And the theme the Holy Father has given us is pilgrims of hope. Pilgrims of hope. He falls upon in this trial period. First three years of the Jubilee, he said, the study of the documents, year of prayer, and the year of the Jubilee. And the theme running throughout is the pilgrims of hope. Hope in war. Good things will come to us. Hope in war. And that is the question that we should have. Hope that the church with Jesus Christ started and who died for the salvation of the Lord. That his message will be proclaimed to the ends of the world, to all people of goodwill, that all will accept him as a savior of the world. And that is all he has put himself in our hands to proclaim him and show him to the world. Dear brothers, I wish you all the best as you come forward to now be ordained as deacons. And you know, those of you, rather every one of you, deacons have first and foremost have proclaimed rather to the power of chastity to live a life for the kingdom of God of chastity so that you embrace the whole world with a purity of mind, purity of heart, purity of actions. Keep that in mind as you accept this responsibility in the church to be always pure in your heart, mind and action. Amen. The promise of the elect. The bishop now asks the candidates to publicly declare their intention to undertake the office of deacon. The candidates will affirm their free choice to observe permanent celibacy for the sake of the kingdom, their willingness to be ordained, their resolve to discharge their duties with humility and love. To uphold the mission of faith, to get clear conscience, to maintain and unreach a spirit of prayer fitting to the way of life, and to model their life after the example of Christ. The candidates are requested to stand.
and to proclaim this day by word, deed, and action according to gospel and the church explanation. Do you promise respect and obedience to the Diocese and Bishop and to your legitimate religious superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to 
Pradhasya Bishop, and to the legitimate religious superior. May God, who has done the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your national bishop and to your legitimate religious superior? I do. May God, who has done the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your national bishop? And to a legitimate religious superior. May God, who has done the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your diocesan bishop and to a legitimate religious superior? May God, who has done the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your diocesan bishop and to a legitimate religious superior? May God, who has done the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to your diocesan bishop? And to your legitimate religious superior, may God, who has done the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Invitation to prayer. The bishop now invites the assembly of the faithful to praise the Lord on behalf of the candidates, whom God is receiving into his holy order for the diaconate. Asking that he bestows upon them his countless favors and blessings. Please stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that God, your Almighty Father, will in his mercy pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants whom he is pleased to receive in the order of that. The litany of supplication. Now the candidates prostrate themselves before the altar as a sign of their complete surrender to God. As the cantors begin the litany of supplication, the assembly kneels and joins the choir in invoking the intercession of the saints. This reminds us that during this grace-filled movement, not only the faithful on the earth, but also the saints in heaven are praying for our candidates. The bishop concludes the litany with a prayer. Let us all kneel for the litany as the candidates prostrate themselves before the altar. Pray for us, Michael. 
Lord God, merciful hear our prayers and kindly accompany with your help what we are about to do by virtue of our office. Sanctify with your blessing those whom in our judgment we believe are worthy to be offered for the exercise of the sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Laying on our friends, we are now approaching one of the most significant moments of the ordination to the title age, the laying on of hands. This age signifies that the bishop exercises this authority passed down from the apostles who ordained the first seven deacons. The bishop will now lay his hands on each candidate as they kneel before him.
the prayer of ordination. The bishop, with his hand extended, recites the prayer of ordination. He asks God to be present in this rite, recognizing that it is God who confers honors, raises individuals to the holy orders, and grants them offices in the church. Our faith assures us that at this moment the Holy Spirit descends upon the candidates, shaping them into sacred ministers. The candidates kneel for the prayer of ordination. Self-dedication. 
position while the dalmatic with exclusive bomb shape and red ornamental strips symbolically represents the sufferings of Christ. It reminds the deacons to offer themselves as an acceptable sacrifice to God. The deacons are asked to stand while the congregation remains seated. With the assistance of ministers, the deacons now waste themselves in their appropriate vestments. Meanwhile, let us sing a hymn. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Teach, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. <coughs> believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. <coughs> Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Receive the 
gospel of Christ, whose help you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. <coughs> Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you, are, what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose heaven you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Fraternal peace. The fraternal peace is a ceremonial gesture signifying acknowledgement and goodwill. The bishop bestows the fraternal peace upon each of the newly ordained. With this, the rite of ordination to the diaconate concludes, and the Holy Eucharist continues with the profession of faith.
Please stand for the devotion of faith. I believe in God.
pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice is yours may be acceptable to god the almighty father
who takes away the sins of the world. Bless are those called the supper of the Lamb.
Oh, no. 